Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of How I Draw, the show where I draw stuff and show you how I do it. Today what I'm going to do is show you how I draw with color. So I'm going to show you how I choose a color palette, how I use that color palette to draw the outlines, and how I shadow and highlight using a simple color palette. So let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is an empty Photoshop file. It's eight and a half inches square. And we're going to use a lot of layers. And the first layer we're going to do is going to be uh, just for the loose sketch. So I'm going to grab a pencil tool. And I'm going to start sketching. And what I use are Kyle T. Webster brushes. And he's got a lot of great pencil brushes in there. So I just use one of the, one of the default ones. And I'm just going to start sketching out a guy. I'm not really sure what I'm drawing yet. Although I, th I have a bit of an idea based on something that was in my sketchbook from about a year ago. So it's really loose. I think this is kind of weird right now. It's not really how I want it, but that's okay. We're just going to keep working on it until we get it right. You can keep drawing over top of everything. Draw a little, uh, draw a little dog here. I'm just going to be holding a cup. That's about it. So that's the beginning. So now what I'm going to do is uh, knock the opacity back to about 10%, and I'm going to add another layer. And I'm just going to keep working this sketch up from there. So in this one, I go in and I start refining the look of the head, start adding some features and see how I like them. Give him a mustache. I think I'm going I'm going for a hipster just to just to give it away. It's going to be a hipster. And if you're going to draw a hipster, you got to give him sleepy eyes and a big big old mustache. So again at this point I'm just sort of playing around looking for you know a look I like. Um, I'm not really thinking about color at all at this point but that's gonna come but the first step before I get to that is going to be to have a decent black and white sketch that I can work from. All hipsters have really long arms if you notice, fits more tattoos that way. So I'm just going to keep plugging away and keep refining little things. Give them a leash there. Skinny jeans, of course. Got to have a tattoo. Upside down anchor is like my shorthand for hipster tattoo. Skinny, skinny legs, and a big old gut goes along with all the craft beer he drinks, and a coffee, an artisanal, uh, fair trade coffee, of course. Boom. Clove cigarette, and you can't forget the glasses. I don't not like hipsters. I just, I just wish I was one. I wish I was cool enough. And a vest. Let's throw a vest on, just to kind of mix it up. And that'll help when we get to color, because that'll break it up a little bit. So I got a dog in the initial sketch that I did. I drew a, a rough shape that was going to be like a pug. I think. Give him some blunt stones here. But I think. Uh, I think when I get to his pet, I might mix it up a little bit. So let's see. What else could I? Yes. Yes, yeah, a chicken. A chicken also with glasses. Yes. That works. So I'm just messing around right now. Just I'm trying to keep the the sketch as loose as I possibly can. Give him a collar. There we go. And there I think I've got my loose sketch. So it's enough to get started with the color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that that uh, loose sketch and I'm going to knock that back. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a palette. So I'm going to bring up my palette window and I'm going to make a new layer uh, that I can put all the colors into. So it's all just sort of based on what I've got for the drawing. So I look at what I've got and I start picking some colors. 
Usually I'll start with skin tones. So for this guy, it's kind of pink. And what I'll do as well is change my brush to something a little bit more solid. And I'll go in and I'll just lay down a, that's kind of a, a rough guess of what the skin tone's gonna be. And then the next would be a, a color for his hair. Blonde just kind of works uh, in general when I'm just making a generic character like yellow hair because it, it's a good color combo, the pink and the yellow. Um, and then from there, um, that's for the eye, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, I never make the eyes pure white. And then need a color for the shirt. And I'm just sort of guessing right now, and I don't have to stick to this too, too tightly, but, but this is sort of a good start. And if I look at this as a palette, I think, yeah, this all kind of works together pretty well. Those are his pants. Uh, need a little something for his boots, which are gonna be brown. Need some colors for the chicken. Yellow, white, sure. So now what I do is I go back to those base colors and I pick values of that color. So I'll pick a darker version of it and a lighter version of it. Just throw those on either side of the main color for the palette. And I'll do that for pretty much all of them. So for the skin tones, um, I'll add that. I'm just gonna add a little bit more uh, there. So a darker skin tone and uh, all working off of just that one base color that I originally picked. So it's just variations on that one color. It's not that hard. So if that middle blue is the color of my shirt, then I'll pick a darker blue for shadows and a, a lighter version for highlights. Same for the pants. And then same for the boots. And for me, that's kind of it. I don't want to get too crazy with the colors. I don't want to pick too, too many colors. I think if your palette gets too wide, then it gets a little bit confusing, especially for, you know, uh, just a simple cartoon. You want to try and keep the palette um, as controlled as you can. So there I have my, uh, my palette. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I'm going to like uh, tint the background. And so I'm looking for a background color that's going to work with the palette that I picked. So it feels meh. purple, feels like it works pretty well with those colors. So that's kind of my background color. That's gonna help just make everything else pop. So now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna make an outline, um, an outline layer that's just for the skin. Oh, I forgot one thing. So I need an outline color for all of these. So what I do is I'll just pick the darkest version of each color and I'll go even darker and I'll draw around it in my palette. And that'll be the outline that I use for whatever that is. So the hair is gonna have a dark yellow outline, the skin's gonna have a dark red outline, etc., etc. So a lot of people probably work a little bit more refined than this, but, but this kind of works for me. A little outline for the chicken. Okay, now I'm ready to start, and I'll start with the skin. Get rid of that layer. Change the name of this one. And I'll just kind of push in and start. So I'm just gonna jump right in and start working on the outline for the skin. And I'm taking that deep red that I made. and just going in and drawing his nose a bunch of times because it takes a while sometimes. And the only things that I'm worried about are the things that are skin right now. That sounds weird, but on this layer, that's all I'm worried about. get his arms very anatomically correct of course 
and uh, coming up I will tell you why I put all the different colors on different layers. Well, you know what? I'll just tell you now. Why wait? The reason I do it is so that I have a little bit more control over changes if I want to make them. So if I want to change the color of his skin tone, uh, I can do that without having it affect everything else. If I was drawing all of this on its own layer, then that would be really hard. It would be impossible. So I've got another layer and now I'm doing the hair outline. So that's going to be his super cool mustache and his little tiny eyebrows. You can probably hear the siren outside. That's because I live in a very dangerous neighborhood. So I'm going to jump ahead and, uh, and then I'm going to group all these outline layers that I made. And I'm going to jump into doing the fills. The color fills, which are using that palette again. And I'm also grouping and naming my layers, and I'm doing that just for you guys because I never do this. So now with that lighter skin tone version, I'm just going to go in and just fill in uh, the skin tones. And you see, I'm, I'm not really careful right now. I'm kind of going over like where the hair should go and all that type of stuff, but that's okay because the layer that I'm going to put the hair on is going to be on top of the skin, so it doesn't really matter if I leave room like that. Guys, those are a lot of sirens. I don't know what's going on, but I hope it's not in my building. So I'm not really liking that skin tone, so I think I'm going to darken it up a little bit. See, that's why it's on a separate layer, just so I can do that. Okay. It looks a little bit better. Now I'm going to go back to the palette and pick the hair color that I picked. Start painting in his mustache and his hair. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how the color fill goes. So now I've got all the uh, all the pieces of them all filled in. And now I'm going to do uh, some of the shading. So I take the darker color that I chose early on and I'm going to go in and just paint in some shadows. So you can see it kind of just gives them a bit of volume. You don't have to do this. This is just something I like to do for my stuff. Uh, to me, it makes it look a little bit more refined, and it's part of the fun of working with Photoshop. Do some for the hair. For me, I feel like this is sort of the way that I've developed my look it has been through um, coming up with a good look for the shadows and the highlights and stuff just to make the the overall cartoon just feel a little bit more refined. I'm going to give him a bit of a beard. And the cool thing about drawing the beard in another layer is that now I can go in and I can erase, use the eraser to erase bits of it. So it kind of looks like whiskers, but they're a little bit lighter instead of being darker. Which I like. Another layer for the uh, pants, the pants shadow. detail there. Got to color in that cigarette. A little steam, a little smoke, a little smoke and steam. And while I'm here, I'll just give him a few details, like a like a wristband, because, you know, why not? Prayer beads, of course. Okay, you can see how many layers I'm using. It's crazy. But now, hopefully, you can see sort of what they're all for. So now I think I... Uh, now I'm going to go in and paint in some highlights. So this just helps them pop a little bit more. 
and you can see I screwed up a little bit with the eyes so we're gonna go in and paint some shadows into the eyes and you can see when I do that the highlights pop a little bit more if the eyes are just not quite pure white just just a little bit yellowy little highlights for the hair can't really do highlights on the chicken because she's already white so I'll just give her some shadows that and that one of the things I like to do too is use overlay as a uh, highlight color or highlight layer blend mode so there you have it that's the final version I threw in a bit of a background too so go out there draw your own stuff and uh, post it on Instagram so I can like it